On today's podcast, we talk about a situation that we see a lot with clients and individuals where the body can no longer handle stress. You get to a place where things were go, 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 you kept up, and then something happened and it just feels like symptoms cascade. So what's happening in the body? We discussed today how your body can actually become less resilient to stress in these situations and things that seem healthy and seem great for the body, like exercise or caffeine on occasion, can actually become really damaging and how to evaluate if you're in this situation and what you might need to do to help get yourself out. Live your life within the moment, moment, and don't go wait until the morning. Happy Monday, everyone. It is almost October, which is slightly saddening. I love fall. I really do. It's probably my, it's tied with summer. I don't think I can pick one or the other because both have so many great aspects. I would say summer is definitely number one. Fall is number two. Spring is number three. Yeah. Winter. Winter just blows in Chicago. It's funny to think about like doing 75 hard in January when it was like really cold. I remember. Yeah. I had definitely had no part of that. Yeah. Um, I admired it though. It wasn't that bad. Like, yeah. It didn't feel that bad. But then Thinking now I'm like, Ugh, I, I don't want to do that. I know. I mean, the holidays will be interesting. We're hosting Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and Christmas. We're still trying to figure out. We might be going to Arkansas for New Year's to visit Nick's mm-hmm. sister. So... That'd be well, fun. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be nice. I love them. They're, we're really close with them and it sucks that they live so far away. So, yeah. um, so yeah, we will see. It'll I think be- we might be hosting Thanksgiving. My dad's coming up and then we're going to take my dad with us to the Dells. Oh, okay. For a little indoor yep. weekend. And it just so happens that a couple of friends of ours and their two kids, their two boys are going to be at the same resort, the same weekend. So oh. I was like, Oh, that'll be fun. Perfect. So, yeah. and it will be nice for my dad just to come and like be with us and stuff. And he won't do too much. He'll probably just like walk around the resort and hang out, but at least he'll be with us. And yeah, we'll be fine. we actually, for Taylor's birthday, my mom got her a stair slide, which are those slides that you can attach to your stairs. Oh, uh-huh. so we're, we've put that in the basement for the winter time. Interesting. I'm like very nervous about it. I do have a gymnastics mat so I can put that at the bottom. So they're not like landing on hardwood. We also have a very long staircase Yeah, that like one staircase coming down into our main area. So I might start with like the half staircase that the top of that, the things we do to entertain our kids in the winter. I know. And that's what I'm not looking forward to. Like right now, literally every night, Taylor and Carson are outside barefoot running around until 8 PM. Yeah. And it does make for a later evening for Nick and I, because once we get them down and get them to bed and whatever, yeah. it's like 8.30, 8.45 before we get to wind down. But it's really nice to have them just be entertained by mm-hmm. outside and friends. Yeah. And it's good for the immune systems too. Yeah. So, so speaking of the immune system. <laughs> what happens when your body can no longer keep up with the stressors, whether mm-hmm. that's mental, emotional, physical, Internal, environmental, environmental. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to kind of set the stage a little bit for this. Um, A lot of people underestimate the stress that they have on their bodies. Uh, They think that things are not as bad as they are because we normalize it. Uh, We, you know, the, it initially maybe was a stressor and then it becomes just like part of your everyday life. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it's not still a stressor. Um, And it's the accumulation of stressors that happen. And just a note, the environmental and chemical stressors in our day-to-day because of food, because of air quality, water quality, all of that has gotten absolutely out of control. Like we were never as human beings intended to tolerate what we are exposed to on a day-to-day basis. We live in a very toxic world. Very toxic. Like what our food companies are allowed to do is – it is, I can't even think of the word. Like it's, it's awful. It's awful. What we have allowed criminal? regulation, wise, criminal. criminal, yes, that is what I was looking for. Regulation wise, what they are capable of doing is horrible. Mm-hmm. What we are exposing our kids to anyways. Well, and here's the thing that really rubs me the wrong way. And I just did a reel about this this past weekend. So I was doing, I was covering, um, Richmond, North of Richmond. And like some of the things that he says in there, like those are very powerful, potent lyrics. And when you think about the food industry, 
it's sad that many people, especially with the inflation that we've seen recently, do not have access yeah, they to don't have an option. healthy foods. They can't afford yeah. to eat the healthy foods. And so they're left with ultra processed foods that are making them sicker. And it's, again, the only word that I can think of is criminal. I don't know what other word to put on it, but if you look at, and I say criminal because if you look at other countries, they do not allow, they, they banned, they have regulations and rules on substances that we put into our food intentionally and purposely here in the United States Mm -hmm. that are known carcinogens that are known to increase blood sugar levels that are known to drive inflammation. Yeah. It's criminal. It is. It absolutely is. And, and the other really toxic thing about our society and Liz and I are not immune to this is kind of the hustle mindset of like, you need to be doing something. You constantly need to be on the PTO or coach of your kid's team or running a business or doing all the DIY crafts, you know, whatever it might be hosting everything. Right. And it puts so much on our system, especially as females. Um, cause we tend to take on more and like feel like we have to take on more both mentally and like in reality. And so what a lot of times will happen is females will go through this period where they can keep up that, you know, yeah, you're stressed, but like you you can keep up, right. You, you keep doing all the things. Maybe you drop the ball here or there with juggling everything, but essentially you're fine. And you're running on probably too little sleep, too much caffeine. You, maybe you aren't eating consistently enough. You're working out, trying to keep the body going right. And then it feels like overnight things just start cascading. Brain fog sets in, extreme hunger at certain points, cravings, really bad periods, or like a lot of hormonal symptoms, insomnia, or really disrupted sleep. And it just kind of feels like these symptoms just start piling and piling. And this fatigue, like we just, I have, I sleep maybe, but I have no energy. I have no awakening response. And It's like, what happened, right? Well, essentially what happens is the body can't keep up. You, you run it to the, like basically nail and it's cortisol just cannot keep producing at the level that it does. Yeah. So when we think about your adrenals, right, we get into a fight or flight. This is your like survival response. Think about if I always use like, okay, getting hit by a car. I know you hate that analogy, but like so think, common. <laughs> th- th- think about a situation though, where you have to like, okay, your kid, Taylor, you said this past weekend, like she jumped in the pool. Oh yeah. Immediately you are running and you are fired up, right? You are there to mom mode, save the child, whatever it is, or save your own life. How long can you sustain that? Like, response. So if you're running as fast as you possibly can, you start to slow down and then you teeter Mm -hmm. out and you burn out. Yeah. It's the same thing that happens with your adrenals. Like you have your fight or flight, but you can't stay there forever. Mm -mm. You may last a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, but you can't stay there forever. And then this is when things really cascade and it just feels like, man, I got hit by a truck and all these symptoms showed up or people will end up with like panic attacks. They're very, very sick. They end up in the hospital, right? There's a lot of things that can yeah. happen when your body just says, I'm on E, I have no more to give because cortisol is one of your main hormones in the body. And a lot of things go south when cortisol is dysregulated. And this is one thing that we see on the Dutch test, right? And we can pretty much pinpoint how someone feels. Like, especially if we see cortisol is just totally bottomed out. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you are exhausted. If I had to guess, I don't know this person, right? But totally exhausted, not sleeping well, trying to, you know, just get through the day and probably relying on caffeine, right, to do so. But at some point, guess what happens? you even become insensitive to caffeine and caffeine no longer helps you. You're drinking multiple cups of coffee and it's just no longer doing anything for you. And so we have to think about everything in our life is a stress unless you feel calm, you're laughing, you're breathing, you're meditating, basically. I think we need to understand something called hormesis. So hormesis is basically your body's ability to adapt to a stressor positively. Mm -hmm. So exercise is a perfect example. Exercise is hormesis. Your body gets stressed by exercise and it positively adapts to make you stronger, fitter, more capable. The problem is when the body can no longer adapt to stress, when you have burned it out, when you, and we usually see this, a lot of times there's a trigger, right? Like you can go, 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 you can under eat, you can diet, and then you hit menopause or you get a divorce or you have a kid, like whatever this major life event is, 
it's like the tipping point of all of it. And it's not that things weren't going on before that. It's just that was that trigger for the body to where like, no, nope, okay, this is too much. This is now I'm going to create symptoms. And there's usually warning signs. I would say digestive is probably one of the main ones that starts first. Um, poor sleep is another one. Um, mood, like very erratic, erratic, erratic mood. Um, and so when we can no longer positively adapt to stress, Things that are normally fine, maybe even healthy, can become additional stressors. So exercise is a perfect example of this. And this is why in our program with our clients, we actually completely remove exercise other than walking and yoga, light yoga, not hot yoga, not burn my body into the ground, 105 degree room, mini weights, nonstop yoga. We actually remove all exercise for at least the first couple of weeks because Regardless of whether exercise is good for you or not, currently for your body that is very stressed, it is not good. And then throughout the phases of the process, you need to then tailor the exercise to what your body's going through. So for our gut protocol, we typically don't exercise very much for clients on their killer days, or we try to put it more on their non-killer, high-fat, low-carb days where like we aren't stressing the body so much with the gut eradicators. Depending upon how they feel. Depending upon how they feel. During fasting, we typically pull workouts off of fasting days unless they're fasting daily, and then we try to put them very you know, intelligently throughout the week. And those types of workouts we're doing with them are not HIIT workouts, like long rest periods, short rep sets, short sets, 30 to 40 minute workouts, maybe like you're not working out for an hour and a half. You need to tailor exercise properly to what phase you're in so that eventually your body can get to a place where it can positively adapt to exercise again. Because right now it just can't, like it doesn't have the vital reserve to handle the intensity and stress that exercise can be. And so this is really hard for a lot of people to grasp, but it's the reality. Like I know you love your 5 a.m. CrossFit class. It makes you feel good probably because it's the only dose of adrenaline you get in a day because your body's so burned out, Mm -hmm. but it's not doing your body any good right now. And it needs to be tailored back just a little bit. So that eventually you're about, and who knows, maybe it's something that like you have too many other stressors in your life elsewhere. This was something that happened to me. I love CrossFit. I also run a business. I have two small kids. I have a husband. I have a lot of other things that I like to do in my life. My body simply couldn't handle CrossFit at the level that I wanted to do it on top of all that. It was the thing that had to give. And thank God it did because I've been like since then completely transformed in terms of how I feel. It took some time and I'm still on that journey. But exercise is a perfect example. And another example is coffee. Yes. So we love coffee, right? Um, There are many benefits of coffee as long as it's not abused the same way that you can abuse many other things that are good for you, right? Devil's in the dose. But what we know is coffee on an empty stomach, because it's acidic, can impact your stomach acid levels. It can also inflict uh, high blood sugar um, spikes and kind of send you on this blood sugar roller coaster. Uh, It also inhibits the absorption of adenosine, a hormone that calms the body. So it makes you feel alert and awake, right? It can stimulate your bowel movements too, but it also increases the production of cortisol, your stress hormone that we've been talking about, which will, again, it'll gear you up for a period of time, but then you might crash or you've become insensitive to it and you don't get any of these effects in terms of the like energy, Mm -hmm. like I'm ready to take on the day, you know? Um, And then when we think about abusing it and doing more than about 300 milligrams a day, um, this is where we have negative effects in terms of our health and prolonged um, levels of cortisol that are elevated. So elevated cortisol just kind of stays elevated uh, rather than coming back down. That's not a good thing because that's a chronic stress on the body. And there are many effects of consistently elevated blood sugar levels and consistently elevated cortisol levels in the body. And so again, you might be somebody who says like, I just can't make it through the day without caffeine. I would bet you if you were to remove caffeine, initially you might feel worse. You might feel the headaches, right? The withdrawal symptoms of caffeine or coffee. But once you get a few weeks into that, you'll probably notice that your energy starts to improve because your body can now start to regulate cortisol on its own without being stimulated so much. So 
our rules around coffee, I think number one is if you're having it on an empty stomach, let's say you're fasting right now, I'm doing some intermittent fasting. I do bulletproof coffee. So there's fat there to support, um, you know, blood sugar levels. And I use a mold free, low acid (laughs) coffee. Bless you. Um, and then if you are somebody who is not, um, you know, fasting, then our rule is that you have it with food or after food. Okay. So there are a lot of companies out there that talk about clean organic coffee because quality also matters here, just like it does any, you know, thing else, but you want to coffee is one of the moldiest foods. And so if you're somebody who's already struggling with bacterial overgrowth, maybe, you know, toxins or things like that, and you're working through eradication protocols, what I would encourage you to do is make sure that you're using a clean, organic, certified, mold-free, low acidic coffee, such as like Purity. I use Purity. Um, I used to use Fabula. I think it was the name of it. I like them too, but it doesn't matter what brand it is. Just make sure that it is certified, organic, mold-free. Bulletproof, I think is another one. Um, also, if you're doing this in terms of like coffee enemas, please make sure that you're using organic, mold-free mm-hmm. Coffee enema and don't use tap water, by the way. I had a lady tell me last week that she's doing uh, enemas with tap water. And I was like, well, that could be making things a lot worse. So let's yes. not do that. Um, tap water would be another stressor on the body because mm-hmm. there are so many things that we're exposed to in poor quality water. Um, just because we have air quote here, clean water. Uh, if you were to test it for toxins, chemicals, plastics, pesticides, um, pharmaceuticals, parasites, various things, you would be surprised that it's not as clean as you think. So make sure that you're using clean filtered water for your drinking water, especially. Yep. And so something else to really kind of think about and consider here is that when when your body's in this state, we kind of use the rain barrel effect. Your body is so, imagine a rain barrel that's full of water. Any drop into that rain barrel is going to cause it to overflow it's going to cause symptoms. And so in this state, you sometimes have to be a little bit more specific, restrictive, careful around what you expose your body to because it's simply sensitive. Like the body just cannot cannot handle very much in this place because that stress load is so high on it. You need to lower the stress load before it can handle stressors again. So think, you know, although we don't love doing it, pulling Alcohol, processed food, processed sugars, gluten, soy, dairy, for a period of time, caffeine, exercise. Like sometimes you have to be more drastic to get the body calmed down faster because you are in this place where the body is just so overwhelmed, essentially. And so in this place, you might notice that certain foods affect you more. You might notice that, oh, my food sensitivity list just keeps growing. Like Liz was saying, I drink coffee, but don't even feel anything from it because you might even have still high cortisol, but your body has basically grown insensitive to it. It doesn't feel the effect of cortisol because the cells, it's like insulin resistance. When there's so much cortisol floating around, your body has to do something. It has to do something to protect itself. And so it will turn down the receptor site sensitivity to it. So you have the, you have the cortisol there, but your body's like, I ain't listening. I I need to protect because you keep hammering me. And so you might even have high cortisol, but feel exhausted. And so you have to get back to calming the body down. And although we don't love taking time and chilling because it's not what we believe in, in this world, in this society, Western society, it's a lot of times what you have to do to calm down that stress bucket. 